Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for today. We thank you for what you're going to do today. We thank you that we're here today. Uh, there's a lot going on. There's a lot ahead, a lot of weight, a lot of, um, yeah, school starting and what that all means and be a life and stuff happening all over the world. So, Lord, we just pause for a minute in the middle of life to look to the one who gave it to us and to look above everything and know where our help comes from. So, Lord, would you be present, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Again, welcome to you uh, if you're a guest here. My name is Jordan, and uh, I am so excited to be preaching God's word here. Uh, how many of y'all like to dance? Hey, that's my people. Uh, I, I like to dance, but how many of you know you can like to dance and not be good at dancing, right? Come on, yeah. Especially we Dutch, we Dutch, my, my clan with the Dutch people. We have two left feet. Well, actually, worse. I don't even want to talk bad about left feet like, <laughs> like that. You know what I mean? When we dance, it's just bad. It wasn't our gifting. That's why I, I married a, a Greek woman. And uh, so my kids have half a chance, okay? Half a chance to dance. Um, and, and dancing's a, a thing. Um, in, in fact, uh, I don't know how many of you can appreciate If you're like a 90s child, you can appreciate some good, like, choreographed dance, Right? Uh, even Joy, Joy up here, he's a phenomenal dancer. You should check him out sometime. Uh, but it's just something about the difference between, like, someone who just can't dance doing their own thing and then, like, chore choreography, where people can move in sync, right? Sorry, I'm a 90s child. In sync, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they were good at it, all right? They were good at it. And so, again, VH, VH1, is that a thing? MTV, right? We, we, this was us in high school. It was like, man, we could just appreciate some good choreography, and then there's lots of just, you know, the, the, the famous ones, right? Uh, you know, how many y'all know this one, right? I don't even know how, I should, probably shouldn't even do that on stage, but anyway, that was a thing. Uh, in fact, my, my uh, here, I'll just show you, a you know, a really uh, famous dance. Here, check this out. I gotta watch out for that. I gotta watch out for that one in the middle, man. That's wild. And uh, where was I even going with all this, you know? This is basically why TikTok exists, you know? In fact, in ancient history, ancient history, to, to 2019, actually, 2019, there's this TikTok dance that came out called the Renegade Dance, right? And it is the reason why about a year ago you'd be walking anywhere on campus or in Walmart and you'd be see seeing a 13-year-old girl just doing like this. You're like, what are you, what's, you know, it's TikTok did that, okay? I remember my nieces, and I love my nieces, like, they're just always doing this thing. And, uh, and I was thinking, as I was reading this week, that like there's this illustration of sometimes life is like a dance. And you can either do your own thing, right? Or, or, or you can work in, in sync or in step with what God is doing. And, and God actually wants to develop this beautiful choreography of, of the Christian faith. That we're supposed to be walking in step with each other. And, and really walking in step with Him. And, and I don't know if you've ever seen one of those amazing flash mob videos. Where it just looks like total chaos until like the beat kicks in. And all of a sudden everybody's doing the same thing. And it's just epically awesome. Well, listen to me, the, the, the work of God on earth is supposed to look like that. Like Christians in a crazy, chaotic world, all of a sudden stepping in line with the Spirit of God, building a beautiful kingdom choreography of something so awesome. And so today I want to talk about that. It's how to walk in step with each other, how to walk in step with what God is doing here on this earth. And it really creates this beautiful wow thing that people can watch from the outside, listen to me, and even want to be involved in. It's what attracts the outside world in because there's something different about the Christian church. There should be something radically different about the way that we live our lives. And, uh, you know, two weeks ago I started this kind of part one of a message that requires two parts. And I was talking about how in life sometimes it feels like you're in the ocean, right? 
And you'll get waves of attack sometimes. Attack comes in waves. And sometimes that attack is through guilt and shame. And even religion will attack you. Uh, and then I also said you got to watch out for the current. Right? Because the current will shift you. And our culture is like a current. So if you're out doing your own thing, right, you can end up like in a, in, in a bad place in the ocean where the current takes you to somewhere you never wanted to be and it will jack you up. You'd be drowning out there. And all too often times this happens. Why? Why? Because we're doing our own thing. We're just being influenced by the culture, influenced by the world. And so instead of going, okay, when I became a Christian and I'm just focusing on what I'm not supposed to do anymore, how many of you know uh, Christianity is actually a calling to a purpose in life? We have things to do. It's not about what we don't do, it's about what we get to do, what we've been set free to do. How many of you know God is alive, God's moving, God calls you, God says, come with me, let's go. It's not just, don't do that no more. It's look what we get to do. It's amazing. It's the best thing you, Jesus said, come to me, follow me, and I will give you what your heart is looking for. You can't find it in your dreams. You can't find it in your career. You can't find it in anything else. In schooling, no. Come follow me and you will have an abundant life. And that's what Jesus wants for you. A life of calling to do something. Okay, that's my intro. Let's get in the text. Galatians 5, starting in verse 13, says this. He says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. And the church said, amen. Come on. Amen. We were called to be free. Jesus came and he died on the cross for your sins. He rose from the grave. He's changed you. He set you free. And so this is your calling. you got to live free. So now what do I do? I'm a free person. I said, hey, don't live under the shame of uh, guilt of the sins in your past. Don't let religion keep you down. Walk with the Lord. And he says, this is, this is what you need to do. Ready? You're called to be free, but don't use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, here it is. Here's the whole thing. Ready? In one word. Rather, rather, rather serve. Wow. That was it. Instead of indulging the flesh, right, living in sin, right, you've been set free from that. Now as a free person, my calling to use my freedom is to serve. Serve one another humbly in love. And then God provides abundance out of that. But that's the calling. This is why Jesus came. You know what he said? I didn't come to be served. Jesus said, I came to serve. And no one was more joyful than Jesus. More blessed, more anointed. Right? I didn't come to serve myself. I didn't come to be selfish. Uh, I, I came to join up. Right? We got saved so we could join up with God on his team and to do something. Look at verse 14. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 15, if you bite and devour each other, if we make it doing our own thing and we attack each other, right? I look out for my best, no one else's, right? Then we will be destroyed by each other. That, that's like kicking each other while we're in the ocean in the current. We're not working together. We're literally trying to drown each other. And how often do Christians bite each other? And we're here to love each other. We're here to serve. Verse 16, so I say, here it is, ready? Walk, walk, okay? This is a Christian walk. Too often times we make it a Christian sit. Some of y'all been Christian sitting for years. Doing nothing. I'm all pointing at you. No, we all do this. But this happens, right? God says, I called you to walk. Get up off the ground. Get up off your mat. Walk. Walk with me. Walk. So he says, walk with the Spirit, and if you walk by the Spirit, with you, you're doing something, then you will not gratify the desires of the flesh, right? He says, for the flesh desires what's contrary to the Spirit. I don't know how many of y'all have had this battle in your life before. Some was already this morning, multiple times, right? The Spirit of God says, obey the law, but I'm late for church. <laughs> okay? Because the flesh, sometimes what's different than the Spirit, okay? And so... 
so there, we, we live in the flesh, but we, we have, we're filled with the Spirit, so we feel this battle, right, sometimes. So the Spirit wants what's contrary to the flesh. They're in conflict with each other so that you never do what you want. I don't know if you ever felt that way. Sheesh. Sheesh. That's why you got to stop asking yourself, what do you want? Start asking yourself, what does God want? What does God want? Otherwise, you're going to be constantly in this struggle. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. That's amazing, right? Instead of opening your Bible, you just need to do better, I need to do better. No, walk with God. Walk by the Spirit of God. He fills your heart. You'll know what to do. And by the way, this is such a tough battle. I used to struggle so hard with, with guilt and conviction uh, and, and in the flesh because I always focus on the rules and I forgot God's a loving Father and I can walk with Him and I'm filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that rose Jesus from the dead. I get to walk with a living God who loves me. It's not about rules. And, but, but in that season, I would struggle so hard with the rules. I just kept breaking them because I really liked it, but then I didn't like how I felt about it and then was doing bad things to my life. And I remember I was talking to a, a friend one time, and he goes, hey, and I'm like struggling. I'm like, I can't believe, I just, I can't stop sinning here, and I need help here. And he's like, well, do you feel bad? I'm like, yeah, I feel horrible. I don't, want, I don't like the feeling, because, and he's like, guess what that is? That's the Spirit of God inside of you. But here, here's the beautiful thing. He said, let me help you out real quick. He said, at least you know you're saved. Because if you're saved, you will have a struggle. If you have no struggle with sin, I don't know what to tell you. Because you live in a world that's, that's, you live in a flesh. So if you never feel a tug of war between your desires and God's desires, I don't know what to tell you. The spirit of God inside of you in that moment is evidence. But then instead of turning to guilt and shame, you turn to God and grace. And you move forward and you get better and he lifts you up. And so again, it's a sign that you're saved if you're in that struggle. But you don't have to lose. You, you can get victory. You get victory. You can walk in it. But it's still there. The battle is still there. And so, again, the, w the way that you avoid doing the things that trip you up, because some of us are here today, man, I've been living in the same routine of just wreckage in my life, making the same decisions, is not simply to tell yourself, don't do it no more. It's to ask yourself, what should I be doing instead? It's to walk, it's, listen to me, it's to take action in another direction. And so oftentimes, especially when I remember young in my faith, it was just like, stop doing that, right? That's the, somebody, that's the Christian faith. Just stop doing bad things. No, it's start doing great things. Like, walk with God. Take action in another direction, right? Sometimes it's, it's just like, I won't, I won't, I won't. Oops, I did it again, right? Another 90s reference. Sorry, I already did, I already did it in sync. Walk by the Spirit. You know, it's something, listen, sometimes I just want to crush a bag of Doritos, right? And I don't mean the, the snack bag. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm talking about Costco. I don't feel good afterwards. Do I still want it? Yeah, I want it all the time. I want it right now. It's 9.42 in the morning. I don't care. Chips and salsa. I can't stop. Why, why do they do that to me? Sheesh. I just love me some chips. So, so you know what I don't do? is go to Costco, put the bag in my pantry, and then go sit in the pantry and stare at them and say, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> I did it again. You don't have to live that way, right? Sometimes we keep the things that are tripping us up around us. And we don't have to do that anymore. Someone today, listen, you struggle with lust, but you keep having that computer in the room by itself. Change it. Sell it. Put someone in the room, put, put, rent it out. <laughs> I'm just saying. Why are, we do, why are we doing this, man? Right? It's like I can't help. If I drink, I go till I'm drunk. Then why is there beer in the fridge still? You don't have to put yourself in that situation. You can make it easier on yourself. How about this one? I struggle with gossip and I struggle with drama. But you still have the friends around you that are in that world. They're gossip and drama, gossip and drama. Guess what? You can get some solid friends that encourage you, that say we don't need to be about gossip and drama. We, we're doing God's work. And so we, we can move forward, right, and, and get strength in community. Hey, how about this? I'm always dissatisfied in life. Or, or how about this? I'm always anxious and I'm always uh, I'm feeling worried all the time. 
But guess what? You don't have to watch the news. No one is telling you. Because guess what? Every time you turn, I've noticed this. It's always bad news. Right? It's always bad. Have you figured that out yet? But you know what the Bible says when you open it up? That's good news. So when I'm tempted to get on the bad news and be anxious and worried, I can open up the good news that says God is for me. And if God is for me, what can stand against me? No weapon formed against me should prosper in the name of Jesus. I'm free. I'm a child of God. I'm a conqueror. I can reframe my whole mind, right? And, and again, some of us, we envy, we covet. Guess what? This is what social media does. Just when you thought it was bad enough to look at everyone else's stuff and feel like you have nothing, they start throwing ads at you on top of it. <laughs> Holy cow. It's like it's never enough, right? And so now I'm just depressed. Everyone else, again, turn it off. No one's telling you you have to do that stuff, right? And so this is a way that you don't have to fall into the same trap. Walk by the Spirit now. Take action in another direction. Take action in another direction. You know, you can either live and do your own thing and make a mess of your life, or you can walk in step with the Spirit and make a ministry out of your life. And you say, God, I'm going with you. I'm going with those who are going with you. Let's see some kingdom choreography take place. Let's see something beautiful come out. And again, he said, use your freedom not to serve yourself, but to serve, right? To serve. He says this in verse 19, right? This, these are the acts of the flesh. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, that is sex with someone who is not your spouse. Sexual immorality. Impurity. And, and that idea is like you're a different person here than you are there. You're not the same. You're not consistent. There's impurity there. There's something that's not uh, integrity there. Uh, debauchery, right? And this means I live for like sensual kind of pleasures, right? That could be, that could be uh, vacations. I live for that. That could be uh, gaming or television. It could be pedicures. I'm not calling nobody out. Look, Jesus took care of his disciples' feet too, y'all. I'm just saying, it's not that those things are bad, it's if that's what you're living for, right? It's just, oh, I'm, this pleases me and that's what my life is all about. Again, not bad, just what we do with it. Verse 20, idolatry. This one's going to test us this year, right? School starting, what means the most to you? Anything above God? Sports? Grades? That car? That job? Anything above God, right? That girl, that guy, anything above God. Uh, Minecraft. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Total joke. Witchcraft. Hatred. Okay, listen to these next ones. Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition dissension, factions, pitting groups of people against each other, again, just talking trash on each other. This is like not of the spirit. This is of our flesh. By the way, that you have this flesh, so you have this temptation at you, right? All of us do. Verse 21, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. By the way, that, that word can be translated as wild parties. Again, all the things that the flesh, you know, goes to. He says, I warn you, as I did before, those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. And what that means is, again, if you can do all that and you don't care, right, you're not, it's evidence that you're not living in the kingdom of God. And by the way, how many of you know that the kingdom of God is not just one day? The kingdom of God is here and now. Jesus said, I came to bring the kingdom now, right? The spirit of us now. In other words, you can live in step in the kingdom of God right now. Even in the middle of, of the craziness of the world, you can walk with the Spirit and live in the kingdom of God right now. Right now. So that's, again, what we can do to avoid that kind of stuff. And all of this, by the way, is just chaos. And you know who loves the chaos when we do our own thing, when we do our own dance, and it's just, you know, 
Not a good dance. You know who loves that? The devil does. He's entertained by that. Entertained. Like, this is awesome. He hates the spiritual choreography of the kingdom. He loves when people do their own thing. It's just like entertain. And, and that list of things I just read, that's dancing for the devil. That's what that is. When I live in debauchery and I live in idolatry and I live in all this and jealousy, and fit, that is the devil looking at you going, ha! Got him! Right? Like some of us, we've been just living to, to entertain the devil. Any, any of y'all heard that song? It'll get you. Be careful. It'll get, get in your head. Dance monkey. Right? You, you heard that song? Right? And, and, it's getting, and this is such a crazy song because the, the, the person who wrote it, she wrote this song as a singer playing on the streets. And she would uh, be playing her song. And she said, people are just so mean. They're so mean. They treat you like you're like a slave to their entertainment. And so she said, if you really want to know why I wrote the song, call it Sing Monkey. Instead of Dance Monkey. That, that's how I feel. But because a dance monkey is like a thing from the circus, right? The, the whole purpose of that monkey is just to make you feel entertained. And she said, I don't want to live that way. People are just mean to me. They take my money, yell at me when I want to quit. She's like, so I sang this song. And here's what's so beautiful. She sang her song out. It's the thing that set her free. It made her famous. That's crazy, right? Some of us don't realize, listen, when we live apart from the Spirit of God, we're the devil's dance monkey. You're doing what he says. You're doing what he wants. You're, you're entertaining the devil. Because he's going, you're not living in your purpose, and I win. It's going to destroy you. It's going to destroy the people around you. And so he takes these things, and he just says, dance. Dance. Yeah, do it. Drunken, do it. Right? Idolatry, do it. Put it all above God. Who cares? And the irony, too, there was, a, you know, that song, Renegade, the dance, the dance Renegade. You know what's really funny about that is it, 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 the dance was about people being in sync with each other. And, and the, the word renegade actually means to rebel against, like, conformity. <laughs> Isn't that, that's ironic to me. Like, rebel against a set of, like, principles. And I just think that that's awesome. Because when you walk in choreography with the Spirit of God, you walk in step with other believers. We serve together. We love one another. We don't, we're not in the discord factions group. When we're actually pursuing unity together, what that does is it rebels against the patterns of the world. You know the Bible says in one part of the Bible says you should rebel against the patterns of this world. Of all those things, it just says, no, don't conform, don't. Get out of that, right? Especially y'all are going into high school, going into college. You're, you're going to straight up have to rebel against conforming to the patterns of the world. The patterns are coming. There's a lot of people dancing for the devil. The devil's gearing up for a big fall season. But guess what? The flash mob of Christians is coming too. Walking by the Spirit, coming to change things. And so we need to make sure we're a part of that. We're a part of, part of that. So he says this. This is what's awesome. And this is where the abundant life comes out. Ready? Look at verse 22. He says, when you walk by the Spirit, ready? The fruit of the Spirit is love. It's so good. Joy. Man, how many of you don't just want some joy in your life? I want some love. Uh, it's peace. The world is desperate for peace. I was talking to somebody yesterday from one of our recovery groups, man. Fentanyl's killing people left and right. Left and right, people are dying, taking drugs. You know why? They want peace. Dying for peace. And yet, Jesus says, if you want it, walk by the Spirit. The fruit of that kind of living, a life of purpose in the kingdom, is the peace you're looking for. Instead of the very thing that's killing you and killing our society. And maybe it's not drugs for you, but it's something else, right? God can give you the peace that you're actually looking for. And the fruit of walking with the Spirit, right, is patience. I don't know if you're like me and you try to be more patient. It's so hard, right? But the fruit of walking with the Spirit is that God does it. God helps you be patient. He helps you be kind. He helps your life be filled with goodness and with faithfulness. Again, this is, this is important. Some of us have a line of unfaithfulness in our family. Listen, the Spirit of God can change that in your, in your story. 
A line of faithful followers of Jesus. Following the faith, following Jesus. And then gentleness. And then self-control. Amazing. Imagine if we all just had those just to the full extent. How the world, that's, what's, that's what the, the, the dance looks like. So when the flash mob of Christianity hits the earth, this is what it changes, right? The world goes, oh my goodness, people filled with love and peace and joy and patience and goodness and kindness and all these things that's so absent in the workplace and at the school, right? Is it yet the Spirit of God does this in our life? But I want you to understand, listen, this fruit that he's talking about, you can't force that to happen in your life. I need to be really, really clear because some of y'all just heard that and went, okay, I need to leave here. I need to be patient. I need to be... No, that's not what I said. I said you need to walk by the Spirit and serve. Make your life live on purpose for the kingdom of God. Walk in step with him and then God produces the fruit in your life. I didn't tell you to go be more anything. I said go spend time with the Lord. Jesus said if you abide with me, spend time with me, walk, walk, walk with me, do stuff with me, then you will bear fruit. But if you don't do that, you, you don't abide with me, then you can do, he says, nothing. You will keep trying to be more patient and you will not. You will keep trying to be more kind and you can't help yourself. You just can't do it in your own flesh. You need to walk with Jesus. But Jesus said it. It's so good. You know what spending time with Jesus looks like? Serving with him. He washed his disciples' feet and says, guess what? Now you go do that. He didn't call them to the Christian sit. So let's go. Let's move. Move along. We're going to serve together. And as you spend time with me, the word, right? He's the word that became flesh. You spend time in your word with Jesus. And you do what it says. You walk with him. You serve others. Then you'll be filled with love. You'll be filled with joy. You'll be filled with peace, right? And again, because that's what you're, 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 you're that's your calling. That's your, what you get to have in your life. You get to have purpose. My wife and I started gardening this year. And I say my wife and I, she did. And it's amazing, this thing. And I know gardening, you do veggies, okay, right, not fruit. So this is a little different. But they kind of work the same way. And you just can't force those things to, go, to grow. It takes time. And so it was 115 degrees like one week for like heck of weeks. And we were like, we need to get out of here. And we forgot about the garden. Thing got crisp, crisp up. Right? Woo. Like one little tomato left. But, but here, here's the thing. The gardener left in that situation. In your situation, the gardener never leaves. The question is, is your heart the soil he needs to work in? Sometimes the soil's leaving. God wants to bear fruit in your life. We keep taking the soil away or we harden our heart. Listen, work the soil in your heart. Let God do something. Let him plant things in your life. And then guess what? How many of you know that whole thing, that whole bearing fruit is a process? You cannot force fruit to happen. I cannot stare at this tree and be like, fruit, come. It doesn't, I, I don't have that power. And so again, we get impatient because we want our life to look like this by tomorrow. No, it's a process. Walk with the Lord. Walk in step with the Spirit. Serve in the kingdom. Be a part of the choreography that's happening. And guess what? He'll change you. That fruit's going to come out. He promised, if you walk with me. You walk with me, I will change you. Look at verse 24. It says, those who belong to Christ, Jesus, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So again, that's why it doesn't have victory over you. You have flesh, but it's, it is dead in its strength to own you. You don't have to let it have you. Verse 25, so since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. So that's our job, right? Keep in step. Keep in step with the Spirit. And you know what's amazing? When you keep in step with the Spirit, you get a spiritual supply that you wouldn't have access to otherwise. In other words, the, the Spirit of God, by the way, is eternal. You know that? That means when you walk with the Spirit, you get eternal strength that is unending. Unending supply. I, I just imagine, what if this happened? You, you, you lived in a house your whole life and then finally you want to retire so you sold the house. You barely had enough to retire, and then you look back, and then you found out the person who bought your house found out there was an oil well right under your house worth a billion dollars. 
and all you had to do was tap into it. Imagine that. Listen, that's wild, but this is how people live their Christian life. Your whole life, you have access to eternal power. The same spirit that rose Jesus is living in you. You just don't tap into it. This is eternal supply. And he brings the supply when you serve. Some of you are like, oh my gosh, the, the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives in me? How come I don't feel that? I'm like, because you've never needed him. You never tap into him. You don't do anything. If you do something that requires faith, then God will show up. Put yourself out there. Rely on him. Start a ministry. Pour into your neighbor. Have the conversation about Jesus with that person at work. And if you're nervous about it, pray about it. Because guess who's going to show up if you ask him? The Spirit of God. And you will see the miracles. This is, why, this is funny. So on my sabbatical, I needed rest because I yelled too much. My voice needed rest. Everyone, we just needed rest from this. I did. Physiologically, I needed some rest. I hated being gone. Because every time I preach, I go, I need the Spirit of God in, in my life. And then he would show up. And guess what? I missed that. I missed serving with my gifts. Because I, I missed what God would show me every week. And that closeness that I'm literally crying every freaking Thursday because I'm not ready yet. Every week. But you know what I get? I get? I get the Spirit of God every week showing up in power and might and strength and supply. Every week. And when you serve and you show up for things and you pour yourself out because you need God in ways you need God, guess what? He shows up. It's the Christian walk, not the Christian sit. Walk in step with the Spirit. Be a part of the team. Don't do your own thing. This last week, uh, we were putting our kids to bed and, it, you know, it was just one of them nights, man. Whew. Okay, Weston's all mad. He lost his wallet. Okay, why he even has a wallet, I don't know why. Okay, Warren is all upset because she wants to sleep in the boys' room. So finally we're like, okay, fine, you get to sleep in the boys' room. We're, we, we had this battle, she, I told you, she's confident. So like, you're going to all sleep together, this is good. And Willem's all upset because Warren talks too much. I, I just want to go to sleep, Dad. She's talking too much. Okay. So... So this is the thing. So I said, we need some perspective here. Let's have a good talk. So we start talking about Pastor Daniel's message about Kenya, because that was awesome, right? I said, look it, man. He's pouring out for these kids. They don't have nothing. Right? They, 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 they literally don't have anything. I said, we should give. We should give to them, and let's like help a kid go to school. And I said, so kids, do, do, you, do you think we should give money to these kids? And Weston goes, Dad, I don't have my wallet. He's all mad. <laughs> and then Warren speaks up. She goes, Daddy, I will give them the money. I said, girl, no, you won't. You ain't got no money. I didn't really say that. But the reality was she was like, Daddy, yeah. And then she brought it up. Actually, the next day, she brought it up again on her own. She's two years old. Daddy, can we give those kids the money? And I thought that was so cool. Because she's happy to give her daddy's money away. <laughs> but did you know the Bible says when you give to the poor, you give your father's money away? Because you're lending from him and the Bible says he will repay you. And God don't give low interest rates. God gives you better than what you ask for. When you get generous, you get a supply. You give your father's money away. He says, you just lend, I'm lending from you, but I'm going to repay you. I'll repay you in all kinds of ways. I'll give you joy you couldn't get. I'll give you peace you couldn't get. I'll give you, I'll change your life. I'll heal things you couldn't get healing from. I'll do work. I got eternal supply here. Just walk with me. Be generous. Put yourself out there by faith. And the same is true of giving is of serving. When you have no strength, the Bible says those who wait on the Lord, who put their hope in the Lord, they get their strength renewed. So this is what we need to do. We are a, 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 a pe people who don't live for ourselves. We're here to serve. We're here to give. We're here to, appear, to walk in step with the kingdom. And again, I just want to encourage us. Let's walk in step with the spirit. You know, this is an interesting season for us as a church because we've been getting so many new faces. And what's amazing too is a lot of people are coming right now needing healing. 
A lot of people need healing. Healing from other things that have happened, and we want to be that place. But I'm trying to weed through some things, too, because also we have hundreds of people showing up and very few people serving. We've got a lot going on and a little people saying, let's do it. And so this is a, a season where I, I know we're not walking in step with the Spirit or we're not living in the kingdom choreography if we're doing the Christian sit. There's times for that, but then there's times to get up and walk and to run with the Lord. Because then he'll give you fruit out of your life that you can't produce for yourself. And the world needs this fall, not the devil going, ah, dance, dance. The wow of the Christians who step up as a part of walking and step with the Spirit to create a kingdom choreography that cannot be overlooked. Because look at the Christians. Look at how they work together. Look how they love one another. Look how they speak. It's just different. And guess what? When we do that, God's going to supply. I'm here thankful God is a supplying God today. Why don't you stand up? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that you call us into something. That you call us to do something. That you call us to walk with you and walk in step with your spirit. I thank you that you fill us even now with the power of the spirit. Lord, would you fill us up? I pray for anybody who today, today doesn't feel anything in the battle between the flesh and the spirit, that today they would call out to you and say, Jesus, save me. Fill me with the spirit of God. And then let me walk with you. Lord, we want to walk with you and see what you can do. In Jesus' name, amen.